Public education is a huge part of the U.S. society today and is seen as a pipeline for economic development through producing the capable workforce for economic demands. Pennsylvania has the biggest gap between the richest and the poorest school districts. And it's not that these school districts are not doing their best locally, right? Schools are funded by taxes, mostly locally. And even in the poorest communities, they have really high taxes but they just can't generate enough to educate their kids compared to the wealthy communities. According to a recent report from the nonprofit Ready Nation, Pennsylvania's wealthiest districts spend more than a third more per student than the state's poorest districts. It all started in 1991 when it required a tax increase to fund the schools and the state decided they couldn't find the political support to pass that tax increase. And so what happened is the state started to decrease its share of education spending year over year, and local communities had to pick up the difference. And the communities that could did, and the communities that didn't have much local wealth couldn't do it. These education funding gaps concern advocates, teachers, and parents due to their real implications for school quality and student success. Jenny, a former teacher with the Philadelphia School District, experienced these lack of resources firsthand. Art supplies is one. As an art teacher, I know that my first year in the Philly district, I literally had zero. Zero budget. I had a big closet full of like old, messed up art supplies from past teachers. Mr. Gonzalez, an artist and father of three, Philadelphia public school students notes the lack of opportunity, especially in arts education. Uh, the, art, the art curriculum, which they, they, they terminated the, the whole art curriculum in the school, so we worked for years to build that curriculum and then they, they got rid of it. And now they're bringing art back because they see the need. They need. They see the need of art in schools, which I, I am in 100% support of. That's going to help like kids that from my community um, learn how to communicate better. I think it's pretty devastating that other schools don't have the same opportunities and extracurriculars as others. Though we may be getting the same diploma as them, they may not be getting the same opportunities as other funded schools. I think that is very important to try to improve. Well, I think there's two big solutions. The first is we've got to make sure that the, poor, the poorly funded school districts in the state have the resources they need. Even with enough money, we need to spend that money the right way. We need to make sure our class sizes are small. We need to make sure kids have art and music in their schools. And we need to make sure our teachers are trained well enough to teach every kid. Many agree that Pennsylvania's education funding equity gaps stem from how the state has historically funded and distributed education resources. It's called the hold harmless. You never lose money that you used to have in the prior year even when you lose students. Pennsylvania policymakers understood the need for a better system of identifying and rooting increased state funding to those communities that were struggling to fund their schools. In 2015, Pennsylvania enacted a fair funding formula. There was a catch, however. This formula only applied to a new state funding after 2015, keeping the inequity of the hold harmless system in place. Advocates are urging greater state funding for education to eliminate these funding inequities and ensure school quality for students regardless of zip code. And that difference absolutely does impact um, you know, everything from staffing to programmatic offerings. So it's a step in the right direction, but as with all formulas, um, the impact is only as great as how much we put into it, which is why the governor and, and I as secretary are always advocating for more funding for public schools. For PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Lab, we're Felicity Bowman, Caroline Doster, and Rebecca McCurdy.